Hey, it's Greg from The Code Creative. In this video, we're going to explore DOM events and the prototype chain in JavaScript. What I'm curious about in particular is that add event listener method that we work with all the time to listen to and to handle DOM events. Where does this method even come from? Let's find out. What you can see here in this very simple example is that I have my browser on the left and my code editor on the right. And all I have is a button element. And I'm writing JavaScript here right directly in the index.html file within a pair of script tags. I'm querying the DOM for that button element using document.querySelector. And then I'm adding an event listener to that button element. Now, where is this add event listener method coming from? And how is it that we're able to respond to events on that button element? Well, let's try something. The first thing I want to do is I want to alert that button. And this will let us see actually the type of object that this button is. So once I save, you can see that it's an object of type HTML button element. Since we know that this is an object, what we can do is we can use console.dir to examine the properties on this button object in the console. So once I've saved my index.html file, I can now see in the console that I have this button object. And if I expand it, well, check it out. There are all the properties that are available on this button object. And as you can see, there's a ton of them. However, one thing I'm noticing as I scroll up and down is that I don't see any add event listener method here. So where does add event listener come from? Well, let's take a look at a diagram. Here on the bottom, you can see that HTML button element, and that's the one that we just looked at. And this HTML button element, it's basically an object. And that's because of the fact that we have the DOM, the document object model. But that HTML button element or object is part of a larger chain. And in JavaScript, we call this the prototype chain. So that HTML button element is inheriting certain properties and methods from objects or prototypes higher up in the chain. Let's go back to some code and examine some of these objects and their prototypes for a second. Coming back to that button element, if I scroll all the way down, I can see its prototype, which is the HTML button element. And notice if I expand it and scroll down, well, here are some of the properties and methods are bolded and some aren't. So the ones that are bolded are the properties and methods that actually live on this prototype. The ones that aren't bolded, like all these, are properties and methods that are inherited from prototypes higher up in the chain. So the thing to pay attention to here is that for each one of these elements, for each type of element in our HTML, there are going to be properties and methods specifically relevant to this particular element's type. So here are some properties and methods for this button element. However, if I come into my code and I do something like create an anchor tag, so let's do document.createElement, and then let's console.dir this anchor tag. And now let's expand this anchor tag element, scroll all the way down, and check out its prototype, which is the HTML anchor element. And if we look at its bolded properties and methods, we'll see those that are specifically related to HTML anchor elements. So at this point, we're here at the bottom of the chain, but we can proceed up the prototype chain now and look at the next prototype, which is simply called the HTML element. And there's a couple ways that we can actually examine it. So one way is if we just come into our console, and here we're looking at that anchor tag element. If we scroll down, remember, we already expanded its prototype, which is the HTML anchor element. But if we continue scrolling down, here we see these three dots. But if we click on them and continue scrolling, finally, we get to the next level in the prototype chain, which you can see represented here with this private prototype property. And it is, in fact, the HTML element. So again, we can expand it. And we can see that this HTML element has its own properties here, which are bolded. And again, further down, all these properties and methods which aren't bolded, but which are inherited from prototypes higher up in the chain. So what you can see on the HTML element prototype are all those properties and methods which are common to HTML elements, regardless of the specific type of element. One thing that's notable is all these on event properties. And you can see them here, like on click, on change, on close, on blur. These are all those on event properties which can be assigned to various HTML elements. And so it makes sense for the specific elements to inherit them from a prototype higher up in the chain. Oh, snap. 
We go deep into these on event properties in my course on DOM events in JavaScript. I'll put a link down below for you in the description and comments sections. I also mentioned a little bit earlier that there was another way that we could look at the prototype. So what I'm going to do in the code, just to clean things up, let's comment out this button element stuff. And if we want to go directly to the prototype of the element, we can do it like this. We can say anchor tag dot double underscore proto double underscore. And if we save and look at the console now, well now you can see we go directly to the prototype, the HTML anchor element. And if I want to go to the next prototype in the chain, I can again do my double underscore proto double underscore. And now you can see we're at the HTML element level. And by the way, this double underscore proto thing, this is annoyingly known as dunder proto. So at this point in the process, we're at the HTML element level. But let's keep this party going and let's move up to the next prototype in the chain. And again, we'll append one of these dunder protos. And we can see we're at the element level. And we can take a quick scan of its properties and methods. And here's some that you've probably seen before. Get elements by class name, get elements by tag name, and so on. But let's keep it moving. And let's look at the next prototype in the chain. And here we come to the node. Now, if we look at the node prototype object, we can see the various types of nodes that are listed out. Like I mentioned, the comment node, there's an attribute node, there's a text node, and we have an element node. Also, the node prototype object has a lot of things related to DOM traversal on it, like parent element, parent node, previous sibling, and so on. Now let's go one step further up the chain. So again, we'll do our double underscores proto. And here's the part you've been waiting for. We finally get to that event target prototype object. And if we expand it, check it out. Here's add event listener and remove event listener and dispatch event. So I don't know about you, but this was kind of surprising to me when I realized that the event target prototype object was all the way up here near the top of the prototype chain hierarchy. And this is the thing that gives those HTML elements the ability to listen to events and to respond to events. Also interesting is that if we look at the prototype of the event target, what we can see is that we have the base JavaScript object. And this JavaScript object is the final base JavaScript object because its prototype is null. By the way, if you want to explore DOM events further, I have a course for you on DOM events in JavaScript. And this course is packed with everything that you need to know about the inner workings of DOM events, how to listen to events, and how to handle them with JavaScript. And we definitely go into a lot of detail on everything from mouse events to keyboard events to focus and blur events, and much, much more. You'll find the link below in the description and the comment sections. I'd love for you to check it out. See you next time.